When you strike a match and light a kerosene lamp, it seems simple enough. A clean, steady blue flame dancing quietly. But behind that small flame is a fascinating and industrially complex journey that begins deep underground with crude oil. Yes, that same thick, black, smelly substance pulled from oil wells around the world is the raw material used to make kerosene, a clean burning, versatile fuel that's been used for over 150 years. But how exactly does crude oil become kerosene? What makes kerosene different from gasoline or diesel? And how has this fuel remained relevant in both rural homes and advanced aviation? Let's take a deep dive into the science, industry, and process behind how kerosene is made. The first step in making kerosene is the extraction of crude oil from the earth. This crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons, long chains of carbon and hydrogen atoms that formed over millions of years from ancient marine organisms buried under heat and pressure. But crude oil in its raw form is not usable. It's a chaotic mix of compounds, and it must be carefully separated and refined to turn into useful fuels like gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and kerosene. That's where the oil refinery comes in, a massive facility designed to break down, sort, and purify the many components of crude oil. Step 1. Fractional Distillation The main process used to extract kerosene from crude oil is called fractional distillation. Here's how it works crude oil is first heated to around 350 to 400 degrees Celsius in a huge furnace. The hot liquid is then sent into a distillation tower, a tall column where the temperature gradually decreases as you go higher. Inside the tower, something interesting happens. Different components of crude oil boil and evaporate at different temperatures. These vaporized components rise through the tower and condense at different levels based on their boiling points. Lighter compounds like propane and butane rise to the top. Mid-range compounds like kerosene and diesel condense in the middle. Heavier products like lubricating oil and bitumen settle toward the bottom. Kerosene has a boiling point range of roughly 150 to 275 degrees Celsius, 300 to 530 degrees Fahrenheit. So it condenses in the middle section of the tower. This initial separation gives us what's called straight-run kerosene but it's not ready for use yet. Step 2. Purification and Treatment Straight-run kerosene still contains impurities, including sulfur, nitrogen compounds, and unwanted aromatics that can produce smoke or odors when burned. So, the next step is purification. This is usually done through a series of chemical treatments and hydrotreating, where hydrogen gas is introduced under high pressure and temperature, along with a catalyst. This process helps remove sulfur, which is harmful to the environment and engine components, improve stability and odor, and prevent soot and smoke during burning. The result is a cleaner burning, more refined fuel that can be used for heating, lighting, cooking, or aviation, depending on its grade and purity. Not all kerosene is the same. In fact, there are several grades, each suited for different uses. 1K1 kerosene. This is the highest quality kerosene available. It's colorless, low in sulfur, and burns cleanly. It's used for indoor lamps, stoves, and heaters. 2. K2 Kerosene This contains more impurities and is generally used outdoors or in applications where ventilation is not a concern. 3. Aviation Kerosene Jet A or Jet A1 This is a specialized form of kerosene used to power jet engines. It must meet extremely strict standards for purity, freezing point, energy content, and safety. In fact, most modern jet fuel is refined kerosene, a testament to just how energy-rich and stable this fuel is when properly processed. Despite all the modern alternatives, kerosene remains hugely important across the globe. In rural or off-grid areas, kerosene is still a primary source of light and heat. Its high energy density, long shelf life, and safe storage make it ideal for use in lanterns, heaters, and cookstoves, especially where electricity is unreliable or unavailable. In aviation, kerosene-based jet fuels are standard across commercial, military, and cargo aircraft. It's powerful, stable at high altitudes, and efficient in combustion, ideal for long-range flights. And during emergencies, kerosene becomes an essential backup fuel. 
used in everything from disaster relief to survival kits. Like other fossil fuels, kerosene isn't without drawbacks. Burning kerosene releases carbon dioxide and older stoves or lamps may emit soot, carbon monoxide, or sulfur dioxide if the fuel isn't pure. That's why many countries are working to transition to cleaner energy sources, including solar lighting, electric stoves, and cleaner fuels for aircraft. Still, kerosene's affordability, availability, and versatility mean it will likely continue to play a role, especially in developing regions in aviation for years to come. So, how is kerosene made? It's the result of a fascinating and carefully controlled process that begins with crude oil and ends in a clean, efficient fuel. Through fractional distillation, chemical treatment, and careful grading, refineries produce one of the most versatile and time-tested fuels in the world. From lighting a lantern in a remote village to powering a jumbo jet across the ocean, kerosene proves that even the most basic flame can have a deep, high-tech origin. Next time you see that soft blue flame, remember, it's not just fuel, it's chemistry, engineering, and history in a bottle. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a like and subscribe if you benefited from it.